All right, these slides, we talked about the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Energy can only be converted from one form into another form. And so another way to look at this is that energy is conserved. So there's different types of energy. There's heat, there's light, there's kinetic, which is known as movement. And then there's potential energy. And so there's a specific type of potential energy called chemical potential energy, which we previously talked about. Uh, and that is energy that's stored within bonds of chemicals. And so if you think to your uh, classic combustion reaction, uh, just think about turning on your car. And so what the engine does is burn gasoline. And so it, uh, that gasoline contains chemical potential energy, which is converted into heat on your engine. And then your engine converts the heat, some of that heat energy into kinetic energy, which is movement. That's why your car can move. And so if you were to compare all the heat and all the movement energy that your engine was producing, and you were to compare that to the chemical potential energy that was being burned in the gasoline, you would see that those would be equal because it obeys the first law of thermodynamics. And so we're going to look through the first law of thermodynamics. We're going to look through the uh, lens of our identification of an unknown metal lab. And so here is a problem. I'm going to go ahead and read through it, and then we'll go step by step at how to solve it. So you test the specific heat of the metal to determine its identity. Uh, when transferring the 102 degrees Celsius unknown metal to the water in the styrofoam cup, 7.23 joules of energy was lost into the surrounding air. The weight of the metal is 34.69 grams. The weight of the water in the styrofoam cup is 52.4 grams. The initial temperature of the water is 23.6 degrees Celsius. The final temperature of the water reached with the metal, pla uh, metal piece placed inside is 25.1 degrees Celsius. And then you're going to use the table below to identify the unknown metal. And so one of the pieces of information you need for all these problems is the specific heat of water. And uh, here's the table that you're going to use at the very end to identify which one. And so step one is you're gonna find the amount of heat that was transferred into the water. And so you set up an expression, the Q equals MC delta T to describe the amount of heat that was transferred into the water. And so the heat that was transferred into the water from the metal is equal to the product of the mass of the water uh, and um, specific heat of the water and change of temperature of water. And so you're going to look back in your problem to see if you can identify some of the pieces of information you need. So is the mass of water given to you? Yes, it is. It's found right here. It's 52.4 grams. You have the specific heat of water, which is 4.184 joules per gram times Celsius. And then you have the initial temperature of the water, which is 23.6 degrees Celsius. And then you have your final uh, temperature of the water which um, it arose once you put the metal piece in, is 25.1 degrees Celsius. So you're going to plug all this information in. You first need to take the difference here, and then you take the product. Uh, but before you do, cancel your units to make sure you set it up correctly. The grams cancel because you have grams on top, grams on bottom. You have degrees Celsius on top, degrees Celsius on bottom here. Those cancel. So you're going to be left with joules, which is a form of energy, which um, is an indication that you're doing something correct. And then it's 328.86 joules. All right, step two, you're going to find the total heat that was lost. And so you set up an expression right here. So the amount of heat that the metal lost, uh, it lost heat in two areas. One was in the water. Once it was placed in the water, heat was lost. But once you took that metal piece out of the boiling water, it instantaneously started losing heat because the air was cooler than the boiling water. And so some of it was lost in the air. So you need to count for all of it because none, none of the energy was uh, created nor it was destroyed. Uh, it has to obey the first law of thermodynamics. And so the heat that was lost in the water, you just previously calculated. So you plug that number in, 328.86 joules. And then now you just need to find out what the heat, how much heat was lost in the air. So then you look back at your problem. 
And in this problem, you look through, look at 7.23 joules of energy was lost into the surrounding air. So you plug that in. And then you take the sum. And you get 336.09 joules. When you move on to step three, you need to find the specific heat of the metal. And so you write an expression to describe all the heat that the metal lost. So you have the heat that the metal lost is equivalent to the product of the metal, mass of the metal, the specific heat of metal, and change of temperature of metal. And so you plug all the information in. And the heat of the metal, you just calculate it in the previous slide. So you go back and you look and see what that is. So you 336.09 joules. So you plug that in. And then uh, you just need the mass of the metal and the change of temperature of metal. So you go back to the original problem. You look for the mass of the metal, which is 34.69 grams right here. So the weight of the metal is this. The metal started at temperature 102 degrees Celsius. That's how hot the water bath was. And then it went all the way down to 25.1 degrees Celsius. So you plug all that in. And so for all intents and purposes for these problems, you just take the bigger um, temperature minus the smaller one. So you end up with the positive, um, the positive and negative. Uh, it wouldn't be wrong if you did it the other way. Just keep in mind that the negative and the positive just denote direction of where the heat flows. And so you would first take the difference here, and then you would multiply the product together, then you take the quotient here. You end up with point, 0 0.126 joules per gram times Celsius. And then the last step is you're going to compare your calculated specific heat, which you have here, to the known values. So then you take the table. And then you look to see which one's closest, and you have an exact fit in this case. And so you would say that um, the unknown metal was gold.